even with modern technological advances, the ocean is one of the harshest places on earth. It's absolutely unforgiving, even for the most experienced sailors. So perhaps it wasn't so surprising when a United States nuclear submarine went missing in the Atlantic Ocean. Nuclear submarines have sophisticated navigation, computers, sonar, and communication devices. And yet in 1968, the USS Scorpion would go dark on their way back from deployment. The Scorpion was third in the revolutionary brand new Skipjack class of nuclear attack subs. The Scorpion was smaller than modern submarines. With a displacement of 3,075 tons and measuring just 252 feet long by 31 feet wide, with a crew of 99, including 12 officers and 87 enlisted men, these subs utilized the Westinghouse S5W nuclear reactor, which allowed the subs to reach over 15 knots surfaced and 30 knots submerged. They were armed with six 21-inch torpedo tubes capable of firing Mark 14 torpedoes to early versions of the multi-role Mark 48, but regularly used Mark 37. The constantly changing situations surrounding the Cold War caused each of the U.S. Navy's nuclear submarines to be on continual service for the purpose of tracking and locating Soviet attack and missile submarines. The last time anyone heard from the submarine was on May 21st, 1968. Six days later, the Scorpion failed to arrive at its destination in Norfolk, where the families of the crew were desperately waiting their return. Somewhat of a task force was assembled, consisting of nearly 60 ships, submarines, and a dozen of land-based patrol aircraft raced into the Atlantic to search for the missing sub. Absolutely no clues would surface, and after scouring the ocean for nine days, the Chief of Naval Operations declared the submarine and its crew presumed lost. The Cold War caused the Navy to push the Scorpion to its ultimate limits, and as a result, systems began to break and malfunction. Many serious oil leaks in the machinery as well as seawater seeping in from the propeller shaft seal raised concern. The Scorpion's depth was restricted at 300 feet, much higher than the initial 900-foot test depths. In 1967, the Scorpion experienced such extreme vibrations, it seemed the boat was corkscrewing through the water. The direct cause was never determined. From this point on, the crew began referring to the submarine as the scrap iron. By May 28th, the United States Navy had known the submarine was destroyed. The SOSIS Underwater Surveillance System, which was designed to detect Soviet submarines, had heard it explode underwater. The Scorpion was only eight years old when lost, and in October of that year, the wreckage would be found. Deep diving submersibles would find the wreckage under two miles of water in a debris field 3,000 feet by 1,800 feet. The US Navy's report on the incident is, to put it lightly, inconclusive. There are a few theories as to what caused the terrible fate of the scrap iron, although they all lack extensive evidence to back them up. One theory, brought up by a technical advisory group convened by the Navy to examine the physical evidence, believed the Scorpion had fallen victim to a hot run torpedo. This is a torpedo that accidentally becomes active in the tube. Unlike many other gas ejected torpedoes, the Mark 37 swam out of the tube. This made them harder to detect by enemy submarines. One very important clue that backs this theory up is that the Scorpion was traveling in the opposite direction at the time of its destruction. This was a common solution for hot run torpedoes. The submarine would turn 180 degrees to activate its anti-friendly fire failsafe, which prevented it from turning on the firer. Another theory blames a malfunction in the ship's trash disposal unit, flooding the submarine and spilling seawater on its 69-ton battery and causing it to explode. The Scorpion, in fact, had been waiting on a new TDU latch, and the system had caused the submarine minor flooding problems in the past. Theory number three claims the Scorpion experienced a hydrogen explosion during or immediately after charging its batteries. When the explosion took place, the submarine was at a periscope depth likely at what's called Condition Baker, where the sub is closing watertight hatches. 
The closing of hatches could have caused a buildup of explosive hydrogen in a battery area, a process that occurred during battery charging. One single spark from the batteries absolutely could have caused a hydrogen gas explosion, which would lead to the batteries exploding. This could make sense, seeing as two small explosions aboard the submarine were picked up by the hydrophones a half a second apart. A popular conspiracy theory believes the Scorpion was caught up in some kind of Cold War skirmish, and the Soviets had sunk the sub. An abnormal amount of submarines were sunk in 1968, including the Israeli submarine Dakar, the French submarine Minerva, and the Soviet submarine K-129. According to some conspiracy theorists, the Cold War had, for a short time beneath the seas, turned hot, leading to the loss of several submarines. There's no proof to this ever happening. Fifteen years later, certain secrets and details would reveal that after 24 hours of no radio communication from the Scorpion, a large classified search began on May 22, 1968. After no clues had been found, and the submarine not making its arrival at Norfolk, it was kept under wraps as to not put more burden on the families of the crew. The loss of the Scorpion, among other submarines at the time, was a tough loss to absorb. Some relatively good news about all of this is that the US Navy hasn't lost a single submarine since this incident. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.